Lithium batteries are the current trend among RVers. But who really needs lithium batteries in an RV? Well, that's the subject we're going to explore today, uh, among a few other things, such as enjoying the RV life. And today we're going to talk about, does RV maintenance seem overwhelming? Well, let me help ease the fear, if it is. Then in our next stop, we're going to go by Mystic, Connecticut. Great pizza place there. And then in RV Envy, we're going to talk about RV converters and PowerMax lithium batteries. This is Eric Stark with the Smart RVer Podcast, delivering the smarts you need to enjoy the freedom of the RV lifestyle without the fear of breaking down. So let's talk everything RV. Today is episode 148. Let's get into it. Welcome to the show today, Alexis. Thank you, Eric. I am happy to be here. Happy to be here. Well, we're glad you're here, too. So you ready to go? I am ready. Let's do this. Full of energy. Sure thing. Advice for the smarter viewers out there. I had like five cappuccinos, so I'm ready. Right on. <laughs> yep. She acts like it, too, sometimes. You're good. All right. <laughs> Technical questions here. Yeah, right, we're so. good. <laughs> All right. So we are here, ready to go. Now. I have one little rant I'm going to make. It's not really a rant. It's just uh, something that came up. Oh, boy. I came across this YouTube video <laughs> about RVs. Imagine that. Mm. No, I actually really don't look at YouTube videos for RVs because it gets me thinking in different directions. I like to stay focused on what I'm doing. <laughs> so I came across this one, and it's from an RV dealership who has, what is it, Alexis, 20 locations? In- yeah, a lot. Mm-hmm. So they got like 20 locations. They did this little short video. I'm not going to save save the name of the company yet because we are doing a video that's going to have their short in there. So you can kind of see a side-by-side comparison. It won't be, it'll be out. When it comes out, if you subscribe to our channel, then you'll get a notification. But when this podcast comes out, the video won't be there yet. Probably won't. So just watch for it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Smart RVer. Yep. On YouTube. Mm -hmm. So anyways, in this video... The person in there that works for this company is going on about how poor the manufacturers are in providing them with parts for repairs, whether it's warranty or just regular maintenance service work. And it's just kind of a rant for 60 seconds about how it's everybody else's fault. And there might be some truth in that. Well, there probably is a lot of truth in that. But dealerships suck to begin with. But the, the point is, it is, they're saying it's so bad that they're making the point for everybody else who thinks you shouldn't buy a new RV. They are just solidifying the point. It's very interesting. It's comical, actually, because they don't know that they're actually doing that. They think they're just making themselves look better and the manufacturers work, look worse. But watch out for this video. It'll be on our YouTube channel. Like I said, subscribe to it. You'll get a notification when it comes out. <laughs> so we're just going to explain it. We're not going to be mean, nasty, or anything like that. We're just going to have some fun with it, okay? <laughs> so anyway, speaking of YouTube, show us some love. Go to our YouTube channel, watch some videos, like them, share them, subscribe to the channel. And remember, sharing videos or these podcasts with others helps them to become smarter viewers and experts like you're becoming or you already are. So share the love. And show us some love. Yeah. It's the day of love. Aw. Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> All right. Now let's get to enjoying the RV life. The title of the of our of enjoying the RV life is Does RV Maintenance Seem Overwhelming? Let me help ease the fear. Yeah. Now this subject has come about because of so many people getting into the RV, I guess full time side of it. They're either fixing up a a van or they're buying a class B and taking that and they're turning these things into full-time vehicles. Like we have a friend of the show, Stuart Takahara, which he's does a podcast, but he's off for like seven months right now. Something came up, but he was pretty much into this van life, the class B full-time RVing thing. And he got me thinking about sometimes people just see, think that this maintenance or taking care of your RV can be very overwhelming, that it's so complex. Mm-hmm. You know, the Class B motorhome or a van conversion, everything's right there. It's in front of you. It's like a shoebox with all your systems visible. Yeah, you walk five feet, you can work on that. Another five feet, this, you know. 
So it makes it a little bit easier, easier to understand the RV. But the importance of being able to fix things on your own is if you're traveling by yourself or you're out someplace and there's no one to fix it, maybe you don't have all the parts you need or maybe it is beyond your skill set, but at least you can get the process going. Maybe it's just a few, something very simple, or maybe it's going to be something more complex where you need a part and you don't have a spare part with you. Now, you know, in a van, a class B carrying spare parts can be a little more difficult because you're really cramped for space. Right. But having some things, especially water fittings, fuses, a little bit of wire, some electrical connectors, those are important things to have. And, but anyway, so don't panic about RV repairs. And if you have to Google it or go to YouTube, just be cautious what you're looking at. A lot of the videos out there are not really that good and they kind of lead you down a road that's, or a path that's not correct. It might be a person doing a video solving the problem in his RV, but it's not the same problem you have. And so it might, you might waste time diagnosing something by looking at some of these or reading some of the, the uh, forums or whatever it might be. So just be cautious. I'm not saying it's all bad. Just be cautious. But don't let this maintenance overwhelm you. Even if you're a seasoned RVer and, you know, maybe you just always have had stuff done by someone else, you know, think about taking care of this. I mean, that's the point of the show or one of the major points of the show is do-it-yourself maintenance. So just take it step-by-step, look at it. And if you're in an RV park, there's always fellow RVers that can help you out. Yep. You know, so you can find help. Even some parts and accessory stores will still help you these days. There's still customer service to be found somewhere. Mm -hmm. So anyways, just don't panic. Don't have a fear of doing anything. Don't let it overwhelm you and ruin the trip or ruin ruin the experience. Mm -hmm. All right. So now um, you can just go to our website, thesmartrvier.com, and everything we talk about is on there. It's broken down in the same categories on the show, enjoying the RV life, staying on the road, Next stop and RV Envy. Mm-hmm. Although RV Envy, we really don't have anything on there. Yeah, not too not much. directly. <laughs> because we cover it in so many different ways. Yeah. Then there's our YouTube channel as well. That's where a lot of the RV Envy stuff really ends up. Right, Alexis? So go on YouTube, guys. There yeah, check it go. out. <laughs> All right. So now that brings us to staying on the road. And we're going to talk about lithium batteries because they are trending right now. Very popular product, but... Who really needs lithium batteries? You know, everybody's asking about us, asking us about them. Do we need them? So what should I do? So let's get into this. Now, nothing is worse than having your RV deep cycle batteries fail when you're camping. You know, but it happens. And sometimes when it does, the the knee-jerk reaction might be to spend a lot of money and it's going to be on lithium batteries. And you're gonna, and you're thinking, I'll solve this problem once and for all. It will never happen again, and that's it. You're just gonna spend a couple grand, get rid of them old batteries, put in some lithium, and you know, it's just maybe it works. Maybe it did solve the problem, but were the batteries bad, or was there a problem where the batter, why the batteries died beyond being bad? Was the converter working, you know, before you left um, to go on this trip where you're relying on your battery, so while you're off the grid, you know, are the batteries fully charged? Was there a problem with the 12-volt system? <laughs> See, that's why I'm asking, because did the lithium battery solve the problem permanently, or did it just solve the problem for a moment or two? Uh, you know, because if something killed the batteries, well, it could do the same thing to the lithium, or if they're not getting charged, so... It might not solve the issue. So we don't want to act with knee-jerk reactions. I bring that up because that's what I do sometimes. I'll show this car. I'll get rid of it and buy a new one. (laughs) (laughs) You know, because the wipers are bad or something, right? You just get frustrated. Mm -hmm. So putting new batteries in might not have solved the problem for you. Maybe in the moment it did. Even if you're out camping and maybe you don't go lithium, you just replace your batteries because... They went dead, but you're off the grid, and you really didn't find out why. Now, maybe they need to be replaced, but so you have to really think about that, you know? So we, we need to not overreact. We, we need to think about it and analyze it. What do I really need to do? 
And even thinking, oh, I just need to get lithium, that'll solve my problem. That's not the case. Lithium does not solve a whole lot of problems for RVers with battery issues. Lithium batteries are very unique. Or RVers will jump on board with the lithium batteries, not really determining if they need them. It might, might not be the scenario I was talking about where it's a knee-jerk reaction or the batteries went dead and mm-hmm. you're just dead set on having them. It's just, it could be just a scenario where, okay, do I need lithium batteries? Maybe you do need to replace your batteries. You know, they're, they're not lasting like they used to. So you're thinking about it, you're pondering, which is good. So you really have to determine that before you just go out and buy them. Now, lithium batteries are very cool. I mean, don't get me wrong. Some of this might sound like I'm anti-lithium, but it, yeah. but I'm not. Lithium batteries are, you know, this new technology. They're lighter. They don't have any fumes like a lead acid battery. So the, the fumes, the acid is not going to ruin anything. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them just look really cool too. Some of these batteries. Yeah, they do. <laughs> the XPONs are green and black and you get all these little parts and pieces, connect them together. It looks sweet. You know, it really it cleans up your battery installation. <laughs> You'll want to show everybody it. But we have to look beyond that, right? <laughs> you know, we want our, our, what we do, the work we do to look good. So people look, see it. They go, oh, yeah, that's nice work. You know, we certainly like that. And you might even really love the technology. You might want to experience it because you like technology and hey, I got to give this a shot and see how it is. Mm-hmm. I mean, we buy a lot of stuff here, trying things out and some of it's good, some of it's bad. Even some of the ads on YouTube. And I say that because I, I listen to music on YouTube a lot. And so these ads cycle through. <laughs> and it seems like once you get stuck in that algorithm, let's say for Dakota lithium batteries, every ad from between every video is going to be about Dakota lithium batteries. And, you know, you sit there and watch them and it's like, man, I got to have one of these batteries. You know, look at that fisherman. I know his fishing boat is so cool because it has Dakota lithium batteries in it. <laughs> yeah. He's catching those fish because, man, he's got Dakota lithium batteries. It, it's got to be the batteries, you know? <laughs> so I'm going to go buy these batteries and I'll have all that he has. Yeah. Yeah, it's not really the case, is it? <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. They paint this picture where you, you can't survive without them. But you can survive. Many people have done very well through life without lithium batteries long before they're in in existence. People survived. You know, I've never heard of anybody going out camping in their RV where they're going out for a week and they were going to be off the grid and they didn't make it. They died because their batteries failed them. (laughs) Their batteries went dead after four days. and Well, they couldn't do anything about it. They just perished with their RV. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that doesn't happen, right? No. So we don't have to have lithium batteries. Now, again, don't get me wrong. I'm not anti-lithium. I'm anti-wasting your money on something you might not need. Exactly. Money is getting scarce these days. You got to watch it, right? Yes, sir. So who should use lithium in their RVs? Well, that's a very broad question that can be answered in many ways. And depending on the circumstance of each RVer, it could you know go down many different paths. But the RVer who usually needs lithium batteries, or is someone, or actually someone who's invested in solar, and let me rephrase that: it's usually a full-time RVer, or someone who's invested in solar, and possibly an inverter who is off the grid quite a bit. So full-time RVers, the person is off the grid, they're out camping for days or weeks, and they're just depending on their batteries to keep everything going. They might have a couple 110-volt things, maybe a refrigerator, and that's where they need that constant power coming in. That's where the solar comes in as well. But solar and lithium don't have to go together, and that's one of the things that is quite often thought about uh, lithium. You have to have solar, and that's not necessarily the case. You know, it could also be someone who is looking at the cost savings with lithium versus other battery options, whether it's an AGM battery, a flooded battery, also known as a lead acid battery. And lithium battery companies are going to, they're just going to push this narrative that the savings are huge. You're going to save so much money by not having to replace your batteries all the time. 
<laughs> it, it's it's going to be astronomical how much money you're going to save. You'll pay for these lithium batteries in no time. <laughs> you know, I don't agree with that. In fact, I just disagree with it because, in my opinion, the real benefit of lithium batteries are the weight because they're lighter and they are definitely more efficient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if a lithium battery has a 10-year warranty, there's going to be a lot of factors in there if you even get to 10 years on that battery. No kidding. And past it, and how far past will you go? Is it you know a 10-year warranty? So is that a 15-year battery? Probably not. And how many batteries would you have to buy before you have to replace the, you know, to equal the cost of the lithiums? You know, it might not be as many as you think when you really pencil it out, especially if you had your RV for a while or been an RVer for a long time, then you know how many batteries you go every three years or five years or seven years, depending on what you have. Yeah. You know, golf cart batteries might last five years. Yeah. AGMs might last seven. There you go. You know? <laughs> you never know. Do the math. Unless you really have a need for lithium. So an RVer might need more battery storage. And the only place to add more storage is inside the RV, maybe in a kitchen, under a bed. Some place it wouldn't be really ideal to have a an acid-based battery. So a lithium works great for that. There's no acid. There's no fumes. They're nice and clean. You know, the cases don't have acid on them. You can touch them and touch something else. It's not going to ruin it makes sense or it could be that the existing batteries are just in a horrible place to get to so you want to relocate them mm -hmm. you know a lot of motorhomes have batteries in really bad spots they're hard to access hard to maintain even cleaning the cables can just be a real workout yeah so relocating the batteries and using um lithium would work great for that even sealed agm batteries might might not be as appealing, but they'll work in a lot of cases. Now, sometimes putting them inside an RV because of the weight of them, you know, on the floor of an RV, you, know, you really have to mount them good, maybe put something underneath it, some extra wood, you know, a piece of plywood to distribute the weight a little bit more. So they might not be ideal. And that's where lithium batteries come in. Mm -hmm. So some people also think that lithium battery prices are dropping and they're not. <laughs> The quality of lithium batteries is dropping. So it appears like lithium prices are dropping, but they're not. You know, some brands like Battleborn, Xbeon, their prices have stayed pretty steady. Battle, Battleborn's gone down a little bit, but not much. They just became bigger and um, they were able to reduce their costs on the backside for production. So their prices dropped a little bit, but not all that much. All in all, lithium prices, if anything, will be going up and not down because lithium is a, you know, a sought after product today or commodity, and there's going to be a shortage of it sooner or later. So we have to keep that in mind. Now, some of these cheaper lithium batteries or less expensive lithium batteries, you know, they get down to where they're similar in price to an AGM battery. So an AGM battery is almost just like a the next best thing to a lithium battery. So you have to kind of compare. If you're looking at a lithium battery and it's 500 bucks, are you going to get five years out of it? Are you going to get seven years out of it? You're going to get beyond that? Some of them have a five-year warranty and it's prorated. So that's worse than an AGM battery with a two- or three-year warranty. The warranty is not a long, as long, but AGM batteries usually last five to seven years. Mm -hmm. So AGM is a very good alternative. Now, if you can get a lithium battery for three or four hundred bucks, and it has a good warranty and the company is reputable, you know you have to think about that. Is the company reputable? You know, it's really placed into this. So you might go with a cheaper battery. But be cautious because the market's just becoming flooded with them. Mm -hmm. And poor customer service um, means they're just going to want to dodge a warranty claim at any cost. Yeah. Now, recently I was told of a company that does really good with batteries and they're really inexpensive. And the batteries are, it was one of them companies where everything's always on sale. Mm. Makes you kind of wonder, you know, <laughs> when it's always on sale. But, you know, contacting them. It's always a two to uh, one to two day turnaround time in emails. You can't call them, you can't text them, you can't chat with them. 
It's email only. So if you're experiencing a problem, you don't want to wait a day or two. Yikes, yeah. You know, unless you get on at night, you might be able to respond to them quicker because they're in another country, Mm. in another land, many different time zones. So you don't want to be on that 24-hour cycle or 48-hour cycle of emails. And they, they answer your question wrong because they don't understand your language, which is English, and not to knock them. But their, their mother tongue is not English. And then they're going to come back with an answer that's not correct. And you're going to have to respond again so days can go by. You know, there's legitimate reasons to have lithium batteries. But there's a lot of things to explore before you buy them. Mm-hmm. And you have to be cautious there. Now, I mean, there's reasons to not have one too. And that's really to the point here. That's what we're, the title of this was about. Do you need to have a lithium battery? You know, many RVers use their RVs just barely enough to even need a battery period. (laughs) And what I mean by that is they're, they might only go out two or three times a year. So it's just a few trips. They don't have solar on their RV. So there's not much of a need there. Many RVers just go for a camp or uh, go out for a weekend. They have two deep cycle batteries and there's not any solar and that works for them. You know, some people might have solar and they're out for two or three days and maybe because the way they use their power, you know, that second night is getting a little rough. So having some solar would help, but also have a lithium would because you can take those batteries down much lower. Depending on the brand, some say 100%, some say 10%. 10% is probably more accurate. You know, sometimes when you take batteries all the way down to nothing, they're hard to get back charged up again. There's a trick to it. We'll save that for another subject. Mm. Yeah, you have to be cautious about this. Do I really need lithium? You know, if you're some of the RVers I just mentioned, you're hardly using your RV. You're always on shore power. Mm -hmm. You know, your batteries, your deep cycle batteries get you through the times where you are off the grid and you really probably don't have to worry about it. It's not something you'd have to upgrade. And keep in mind, too, to go to lithium, depending on the year of your RV, you might have to change your converter as well or the main board in it. So it's a lithium friendly charger. You know, like Wolfco, WFCO, they're all their new inverters are auto detect. So they detect whether it's, you have flooded batteries, AGM batteries or lithium and it, it charges it accordingly, which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that, then you'd have to upgrade that and you got to charge them correctly. It's very important that that happens. Yep. Now, Now, as I said a moment ago, solar panels are not required with lithium. You can have lithium batteries without solar. They don't have to go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. So if you buy solar, you don't have to get lithium. Lithium just gives you a little more storage, um, which is nice. But if you have solar, depending on what you're doing, it might not really even matter. So you you have to weigh the odds there. Yeah. You know, regular deep cycle batteries, you can take down to about, you know, 60%, 50%. So there's a... What, a 30% gap there between a lithium, 30 or 40, depending on the brand you have. So it's not a huge thing. Even six volt batteries, you can take down to 80 or 90%, 80% for sure. Manufacturers say different things. So that gets, that gets you pretty close to lithium as well. So the depth of discharge is going to vary by the battery brand and the model of the battery. So you can see there's definitely pros and cons to lithium. And each RVer needs to decide if lithium is for him. You know, do the research. And as tempting as it is, as I've said before, you know, use YouTube as your guide, but be cautious. <laughs> be very cautious. Very cautious. You know, the videos aren't all accurate, but go to the manufacturer's website. That's where you find the warranties. You know, hearing what people say, you know, in the RV community or whatever, you know, wherever you're using these batteries, maybe using them on a, a shed or a house too, but see what people are actually saying. Real people not doing YouTube videos who are getting paid to do them, you know, they're getting a, a some sort of uh, compensation for it. You know, talk to people who are just bought the batteries, paid for them out of their pocket, and if they suck, well, they're out the money and that's that, you know. And try calling the company. Make sure they're there. Make sure they answer the phone. See how long it does take to email them. Put them through the test before you ever buy the battery. Mm -hmm. If you get them on the line, then ask them a bunch of questions. 
Ask them about tech support or ask them to transfer you to tech support and see if you actually get some help or not. Those are important things because when you have a problem, you want to deal with it right then and there, not down the road. So do that. And another thing to, to be aware of is some companies that are making lithium batteries, you know, in 2023, maybe you bought one lithium battery and I'm going to buy another one um, next year when I have a little more money, maybe when I get my tax returns back. So you call up the company or contact them and you order a new battery, or maybe you talk to them first about getting another battery, and they tell you, oh, these batteries don't work with those older batteries. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so now you got an older battery that won't work with a newer battery. Same company. Keep that in mind. That's happening. Wow. And now you're almost forced to buy two new batteries or have two batteries that really won't work that well together. It could be a real problem. I wonder if that was done on purpose. If you bought a battery and you want to add more, it might not happen. So <laughs> also, if you're going to buy, if you're going to buy two batteries and buy them right away at the same time, yep. you know, same age, everything, mm -hmm. if you're going to buy four, try to buy four at the same time or three, unless you know the company is trustworthy and they're not going to do that to you. <laughs> so I point out some of these negatives because customer service is just being flushed down the drain. Yeah. You know, many companies just flat out don't care about you or your RV. So you need to be diligent and make sure you deal with a company that does care. And so that's why I do what I do <laughs> to help every RVer to be that smart RVer and enjoy their RV. Exactly. <laughs> All right. So now if that helps you some, share this with a friend, let them know you can sound like the expert, share them the podcast or share the podcast with them. And this eventually will be on YouTube as well. We do the, all these staying on the roads end up on YouTube. Um, we're probably about eight or nine behind right now. So it'll be months before this is on YouTube, but we'll be there <laughs> just so you know. Now, Alex has been patiently sitting here while I've been going on about lithium batteries and who's yeah, the I one. Sheesh. <laughs> and she wants to talk about Mystic Connecticut. I mean, marvelous Mystic Marvelous. Connecticut. Yes got that alliteration there <laughs> so alexis what can you tell us about mystic connecticut well the reason i picked this was kind of because i was scrolling through some movies the other day and i saw mystic pizza <laughs> and i figured hey i know that's a real town and i know that they still have a pizza shop there so i'm gonna i'm gonna explore this place and it is really cool it's right by the ocean um so in connecticut i mean it's beautiful we already know that especially in the fall, but if you head over there, uh, there's a lot to see, a lot to learn, a lot to do. Um, and they, I did confirm that that pizza shop is still open, Mystic Pizza. So if you're an 80s movie fan or if you haven't seen it yet, check it out and then go get yourself some pizza. <laughs> and is there information on our website about Mystic Pizza? There sure is. A few different pages, actually. Yep. Okay. Got some info for you, folks. <laughs> So you see what we get when Alexis does these at lunchtime, right? It's all yeah. Food. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> so Mystic Connecticut looks pretty cool. Looks like mm -hmm. a lot of it's about food, mm -hmm. eating. Yeah. It's okay. Yep. I like to eat. <laughs> and But, you know, again, it's an rv -er place. Oh, yeah. And it's Big along time. the ocean. Yep. So that makes it kind of special in itself, especially if you don't live near the coast. Yeah. Going to the coast is always a big treat, you know, like something oh. new all the time. Exactly. And so there's um, drives, scenic drives. It's very outdoorsy. They have an aquarium there if you're into that. They do. Mm -hmm. They have different festivals and events. Yep. So that's something we were talking about here the other day is planning your trips around events. Exactly. If you're thinking of going to someplace like this, yeah. you know, see what's happening there. Maybe Mystic's not having some of the time you can go to that area, but maybe another town down the, yeah. the coast is or up the coast. Yep. And so it might be worth planning a trip to go to that place instead. You know, look for other things happening to kind of make that trip that much better for you and your family. Exactly. More memories out of it, right? Exactly. Yep. Good idea. All right. So I think we covered it. Mystic, marvelous Mystic Connecticut <laughs> is on our website, thesmartrv.com. Mm -hmm. 
under the next stop section, mm-hmm. like all the other cool places to go. <laughs> and as a reminder, if you have a a, um, a Freightliner M2 or S2 RV, not only does SunPro Manufacturing sell windshield covers for them, but now they have the newer 100% blockout windshield cover, so it doesn't allow any sun in. So you have that 100% privacy. Go to sunpromanufacturing.com mm-hmm. and you can check that out. It's about sunpromfg.com. Yes. All right, now that brings us to RV Envy. And today is RV Converters Made Simple. And this is really simple. This is as easy as it gets for me because all you have to do <laughs> is go to our website, the smartrvier.com, and go to do it yourself RV articles. And there's a post there about RV converters. It breaks them down, brands, models, what they look like, how they work. Everything needs to know is there. It'll make you an expert. (laughs) So go check that out. And again, it's very simple. Because RV converters have this thing that sometimes people think are very complex, but they're not. They're very, they're very simple little product. Yeah. You know, they're, they're like a box. That's just how easy they are to understand. So go there and you'll know everything you need to know. And then also look up your brand of Converter you have and go to the manufacturer's website and download any manuals they have on it. Manufacturers have great stuff on their websites anymore. So like if you have a Wolfco, WFCO, go to the website and you can download the, the manual for it and you'll be set. Now I also said we we're going to talk about PowerMax lithium batteries and we're just going to touch on this. PowerMax makes converters as well. They're pretty much identical to uh, Wolfco converters. They're a great product. It's a good company. They have their converters are quality. And I just talked to them uh, two weeks ago about their lithium batteries. They retail for around 500 bucks. So they're not overly expensive. And their warranty, because they're still new, their warranty is kind of in flux right now. It's kind of odd. But if you buy one and it fails, they just give you a new battery, no questions asked. Nice. You know, so you can't beat that. And their their whole attitude is very casual. You know, they just, whatever it takes to make you happy. I like that. And their batteries are as good as the other brands. You know, they're, I said they're newer to it, but it doesn't discount the quality of the battery. They make quality products. And that's the thing. They're into other stuff in the RV industry. They're not just jumping on the lithium bandwagon because they can. I mean, obviously they can, but they're selling other products, so that builds up their reputation. They have some street cred, if you will. So check it out. Go to PowerMax's website, PowerMax Converters, I think is it. Yeah. Just Google PowerMax Converters, and mm-hmm. you'll see their website. It's a dot .com. All right, so that brings us to the end of the show today. So check out our YouTube channel. You go to YouTube, type in the Smart RVer in the search bar, and you will see us there. Yes, sir. Or you can go to our website, and there's always a link to it as well. Or any one of our websites will take you to our smart or our YouTube channel, the Smart RV Year. That's where all our videos are, and even some merchandise you can buy: mm. shirts, mugs, whatever. Yeah. All right. So next episode will be 149, and this is about how do you communicate in an emergency or in an area without cell phone coverage. So it's been a great show today, Alexis. Thanks for stopping by. Sharing your insights on where to get pizza. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> so this is Eric Stark with the Smart RVer Podcast. It's been great hanging out with everyone. If I don't see you on the road, let's connect at the smartrver.com.